thought about China's space program and all the, whatever. Uh, but my suggestion to you is it is a good starting point. <coughs> and on Wikipedia, when you type in list of space agencies at Wikipedia, it presents to you if I almost had the link but I forgot it. It is a color coded graph of all the space agencies that have been created in the world. Uh, whether they have closed or whether they are opening or whether they are still in operation. I'm not saying you take all the information for truth. What I'm saying is it connects you to those websites themselves uh, and it tells you whether or not they are able to do manned space flights, I hate that term, uh, people space flights, uh, satellite communications, whether they do security, uh, and it's all color coded and you can click to go get more information to the websites of those big agencies rather than like the Wikipedia search, where you just like go from Wikipedia page to Wikipedia page, right? Uh, my suggestion is when you kind of need information or historical background about it, I think it's a good place to start and it's surely not your final place for research by any means. Uh, what I and the, so those are the countries that I see doing acting and I think those are the counter plans that will be much more competitive and interesting on this topic is for other countries to enact space programs. So advanced counter plans, agent counter plans, I also think there could be some cool consultation kind of plans that actually are, con that are I think, actually have literature about consulting, particularly when like countries like Japan or Russia work with the United States to produce that same technology. So any relations to that to me could then be put into kind of a consultation kind of plan. And I don't think the evidence is that hard to find that we should consult Japan or Russia about whether or not we move on so the last international actor, <laughs> well, I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good, funny. <laughs> I thought there might be a space lull cat somewhere. Uh, the last one is the International Space Station. It is a developed research facility which exists in low Earth orbit. Now when I googled that, to me what that meant was that you, it, low Earth orbit means that you can travel out to space and then come back easier. <coughs> That's the only way that I've understood it. See, this is why Wikipedia is not good. Because they just like talk in big, big generalities. My understanding of low Earth orbit and what it means for space flight is it determines the ease of coming back to Earth. Uh, and the ease of traveling to Earth, which I could be wrong. And that might be. But that's what I think it is. Uh, the construction on the station began in 1998, and it's still not finished. It will not be completed until 2012. And it's expected to remain in operation until at least 2020. Yes? Sure. Uh, it was it began being made. Uh, it began construction in 1998. <coughs> it is scheduled for completion in 2012, and it's expected to remain open till at least 2020, potentially 2028. The ISS does laboratory research uh, in microgravity. It does a plethora of environment research that we talked about. It conducts experiments in biology, human biology, astronomy, meteorology. The coolest part about the International Space Station is that it's a joint project uh, between five different space agencies. NASA, which is the United States, the Russian Federal Space Agency, which they call RKA, JAX, which is Japan, the ESA, which is the European uh, Space Agency, Canada. Man, they love space in Canada. I am not kidding. They do. Other kind of plan, just saying. Yeah. Yeah. The United States. Do you want the space names of the countries? United States, Russia, Japan, 
the European Space Agency, and Canada. There's also a discussion, at least on like the college China topic, a large discussion of whether or not we should invite China into the International Space Station. I don't know what would be better, but maybe like a conditioned counter plan to invite China to the space station. But there's way more new and contemporary literature about why or why not we should include China in the space station. A large chunk of it that they would just like take the research and run. They're probably not true, but <laughs> dumb. Um, but really, a lot of them are just like, no, nah, we'll take the technology and just go. It's not like they just like get in their car and drive away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. In their space cars. Any questions about international actors? <coughs> Am I going slower? Okay, yeah. that's what I want to make sure. <coughs> Last one is non-government actors. So a large chunk, at least, of the United States space policy is becoming mostly privatized. The first one is they call, I'm so not kidding, space tourism. It is like the bougiest, most capitalistic, ridiculous slew of bonkers that I've ever heard of. <coughs> Opening space up to the public. Now the dream of reaching up to the stars could be one step closer as a private British American enterprise, Virgin Galactic, is actively trying to promote space tourism. This is about enabling tens of thousands of people, I hope, uh, from all around the world to get that unique astronaut experience. Looking back to the Earth, looking out into the blackness of space, the price tag on this space adventure is two hundred thousand dollars, compared with the twenty million dollars that tourists have to pay today. Egan is among eleven Russians that couldn't resist the offer, and he decided to take his family and his friend with him. I have uh, always dreamed about uh, coming to space, and when I when I thought of possibilities not to spend in Egan or wherever, uh, I just went into, into this opportunity. Previously, for budding space versions, there used to be only one option. In 2001, the Russian Space Agency was the first to blast off with Dennis Tito as the first amateur cosmonaut. After four successful tourist trips into orbit, it has a monopoly on the market. Until recently, space travel was available only to a very limited number of people. But even though it is becoming less expensive, it still comes at a cost. And if you want to get up close <laughs> and personal with the stars, you still have to put your hand in your pocket and shell out the cash. And experts say the suborbital flight by Virgin Galactic is a completely different experience to that of the Russian Space Agency. Merchants propose ten days of orbital flight. People fly to the ISS and work there. Here are the people who go in zero gravity just for a few minutes. And we have to take a few shots of the Earth and that's it. Virgin Galactic is planning to roll out their first passenger spacecraft in the end of next month. Dozens of tests are due to follow before the first passenger flight takes place. That is ridiculous. I'm just gonna say that is. I'm sorry. Opening space up to. Sorry. These are not space. But what it does is it's a big plane that has two mini space planes underneath it. They take them up really high and then let them go and then they just shoot up for five minutes and then just come back down to earth for two hundred thousand dollars a person. And that's the drop in the right space, though. I just think it was interesting. All right. There's nothing really about that. I just thought it was cool to tell you. That's all. I'm a big YouTube fan. I don't know if anyone's ever started here. All right. So there's uh, the private... Oh, here it is. Uh, so space become more privatized. But there's also... This is an example of Wikipedia. So this is what it's like. It gives a whole list of all of the private space companies and what type of uh, activities or entities or services they provide. 
I think it's ridiculous to say that is all of them. Yeah. There's a lot of them. They make money off of this. Bank. They make bank off of this. Uh, and not only does it deal with a bunch of the United States, but it's also a large chunk of um, Russian tourism is really big into space tourism. Uh, and so is uh, the European Space Agency has now started developing it, which we'll talk about. But from there, you can also, at that website, you can literally just type in list of private space flight companies. At the bottom of that page, they'll give you a link to that other table that I was talking about, about the different governments who have space agencies as well. So, sorry. Uh, they have uh, Prime Night Space. And one of the coolest things I've seen in Prime Night Space is called the X Prize. Does anyone know what this is? You do? Cool. Uh, what is it? It's basically, I think it's by Google where they. Uh they promised like a hundred thousand one million dollar prize for like a huge special like the first grand tour for the first like so yeah. Is that your girlfriend? Alright, this is called X Prize and it actually explains what it is. It's one of the biggest privatized uh, space company or space program uh, that funds a large chunk of space exploration. because uh, they actually have different categories of different space exploration that they fund and will give grants to. So it's not just like we only accept technology that can take pictures of the moon, but they also provide grants to uh, finding minerals in space. They do it for if you can create uh, manned, uh, persons uh, occupied space flight objects where, uh, or they do one for like a security satellite as well. So they have different like or parts of it or different uh, subcategories that they fund things for. So I think this is like one of the cooler parts uh, or kind of plans on the topic. Uh, and the evidence is like really, really, really good. And if you like Google News search, it's one of the first things that come up because it's Google. 
So they just have like article after article after article after article, uh, which is pretty cool.